Live from KSAT 12, the night beat starts right now. Off the top tonight, property owners worried about losing their homes because of this, losing entire neighborhoods. Yeah, so here's the deal. The city of San Antonio has a plan to address flooding right along Highway 90 west of Interstate 35. But that plan could mean that entire blocks of homes get bought out. Yeah, the city tells Patty Santos if nothing is done, thousands of homes could be lost. So it's like you become family yeah, in this yes, neighborhood. Right now. Everybody around here is like family. These Thompson community residents worry their neighborhood could become a drainage pond and a park. Everybody is in tears and everybody is upset and we don't want to we don't want to move from our homes. This has been Sarah Cervantes's neighborhood for nearly 70 years. Her home sits along the Concepcion Creek along Highway 90 and General Hudnell Drive. A federal emergency management agency map shows it sits in a flood zone. Data shows each year her neighborhood has a 1% chance of seeing severe flooding. This area has never seen a 100 year storm event and we're trying to fix the problem before it actually happens. Yeah. To fix the flood risk, the city is proposing a $240 million plus flood control plan. Assistant Director of Public Works Robert Reyna says it would sacrifice over 100 homes but save thousands of others during a 100 year flood. We, we understand there's a big impact uh, for these neighborhoods, so this is an easy decision when we something we all need to make together. That's one of the city's three proposals. Each one has different phases and prices and all would impact property owners along Highway 90 west of I-35. According to the plans, homes in the Thompson, Brady Garden and Palm Heights communities could be considered for buyouts. You're looking at homes that have been in generations for two or three generations. Rudy Lopez, resident of the Thompson Neighborhood Association, worries that during a housing crisis, this place retired residents won't be able to afford a new home. We want the city to look at any possible solution other than destroying a whole neighborhood. Any proposal would need a city council vote to be placed in the upcoming 2027 city Wait, bond for taxpayer really approval. Patty Santos. Everybody knows each other. KSAT 12 News. We'll continue to follow this case. By the way, there have been several meetings about this proposal already. The next meeting is this Wednesday, March 27th at Brentwood Middle School. That meeting will start at 6 p.m. Sometimes there are crimes you just can't understand, like someone smashing a car window, breaking a steering column, and then just walking away. Well, this is what people found when they walked their cars this morning near Prue and Babcock Roads. Three vehicles were damaged just outside of the gates of an apartment complex. Now, we spoke to a brother and a sister. They share a car, which was damaged, and they're telling us that nothing inside that car was taken. They left the car running, and it's like, broken from the top, the window, the windshield is broken, and it's, I don't know why they're doing that. They did. So Bianca and Jose Moreno don't know how long it's going to take for their car to be repaired. By the way, police are telling us that two other vehicles in that area were also stolen last night. Tonight, police in Leon Valley searching for a person who started a fire inside a motel room. That fire called in around 2 this morning at an Econo Lodge on Wurzbach near Bandera Road. Leon Valley fire officials say there were flames actually coming out of one of that motel's rooms. Some of the guests had to evacuate, but luckily no one was hurt in any of this. So the Bear County District Attorney's Office wants to remove itself from the case of a teenager accused of evading arrest. Now, this is the same team. You see it here. He was shot by a former SAPD officer whose case the DA's office is prosecuting. This morning, the Bear County DA's office said that it would file a motion to recuse itself from the Eric Cantu case. In October of 2022, Cantu was shot outside of a McDonald's parking lot by then officer James Brennan. Cantu was charged with evading arrest and aggravated assault at first, but then the DA's office later dismissed those charges. And then last year, Cantu was charged with evading arrest twice more. He's expected back in district court next month. A judge reset the case for the man accused of shooting and seriously injuring two officers last year. That's Jesus Prado. He's facing two counts of attempted capital murder of a police officer and one count of deadly conduct. So this dates back to an incident that happened last October. Police say that at that time, Prado went to a house to pick up his children from his estranged wife and then threatened to set the house on fire. Police showed up. And that's when they say that Prado started shooting at them. 
Prado did turn himself in that same day. By the way, his case has been reset for May 23rd. A San Antonio City Councilman's first court appearance in his drunk driving case delayed again. Mark White of District 10 arrested in December following a traffic stop. His new hearing date is rescheduled for May 14th. This is actually the second time his first day in court was delayed. The first reset due to a delay getting the results of a blood alcohol test. Those results have since come back and show White was above the legal limit. However, his attorney said a new reset is needed since the defense is still reviewing those blood test results. Now we want you to take a really good look here. Have you seen this man here? He's been missing since March 17th and San Antonio police are saying that he has a medical condition. That's 64 year old Benjamin Vargas Regalado. He goes by Ben. He's about five foot nine. He's got brown eyes and usually wears his hair in a ponytail. He also has several tattoos. So if you've seen him or you know where he is, police want you to give them a call. It has been two years and three months since she was last seen on a San Antonio playground. The search for Lena Keel is not ending. Take a good look at your screen. This is what she could look like today. So that specific image is from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Little Lena would be six years old today. You may remember that she disappeared in December of 2021 when she was just three years old. She was last seen on the playground of her apartment complex off of Fredericksburg Road. Since then, her family has been grieving and they are desperate for answers, but they are not giving up looking for her. If you know anything that could lead to Lena, please call the San Antonio Police Department at the number on your screen, 210-224-7867. Now tonight we're also learning about that little boy who you see on your screen. He was a victim in a horrific bus accident on Friday near Austin. We told you about this. According to Hayes CISD, five-year-old Ulysses Rodriguez Montoya was killed in that accident when a concrete truck slammed into a school bus in Bastrop. Ulysses' is a pre-K teacher says that he was a happy boy. He loved dinosaurs, you can tell by his shirt. Ulysses was one of 44 elementary school students and 11 adults who were on their way back from a field trip to the Bastrop Zoo on Friday. More than 50 people were hurt in that crash. At least four of them had to be airlifted to the hospital. The crash also claimed the life of 33-year-old Ryan Wallace. We're told that he was driving a vehicle behind that school bus. And many of them still dealing with the sights and the sounds they witnessed that day. The Uvalde School District tonight expanding its efforts to help teachers from Robb Elementary. So we know the school board unanimously approved its new mental health days plan earlier tonight. The night team's John Paul Barajas joins us now to explain what the district is planning to do next to help those people. John Paul. Steve, Stephanie, as staff affected by the Robb Elementary shooting can now apply for additional mental health days. UCISD says it already gives teachers two mental health days each year, but those seeking an additional day must meet certain qualifications. That includes using the two mental health days already provided, along with proof of a scheduled appointment with a counselor or a medical provider. It must also have been employed at Robb Elementary at the time of the shooting or have an immediate family member, quote, impacted by the tragedy. And staff will have to apply for the extra mental health day, which would be approved by a district committee. Meanwhile, board members also heard a construction update on the school that will replace Rob. Construction started last month and the district says a work is on schedule. Trustees were told the pad for the school is nearly finished and the pad for the cafeteria should be done by next week. Now UCISD expects construction to wrap up in the 2025-2026 school year. The Valley CISD Moving Forward Foundation is still working to raise about $20 million for construction. However, it recently announced a $1 million gift from John L. Now III and Silver Eagle Beverages. Steve, Stephanie. Thank you, John Paul. Let's go to your Nightbeat News Flash right now. Tomorrow, the U.S. Supreme Court will hear a case that could impact how women get access to Mifepristone. It's one of two pills used in the most common type of abortion in the country. The case focuses on whether the U.S. Food and Drug Administration overlooked safety concerns when it made the drug easier to access. That includes getting it in the mail. Boeing's CEO Dave Calhoun stepping down. The company's chairman and the head of the commercial airplane units also set to go. The plane manufacturing giant hit with questions about quality control leading to dangerous situations for the last few years, including two deadly 737 MAX crashes in 2018 and 2019 that killed hundreds of people. 
More recently, Boeing has been dealing with the fallout of a door plug blowing off the side of an Alaskan airline plane earlier this year. Calhoun and the two other Boeing executives will leave their posts by the end of the year. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. Now, looking ahead, we want to tell you about this. Our Wednesday, on Wednesday, our KSAT community partners are hosting a town hall to share information on organ donations, a really important topic. We're also going to discuss the challenges and also the misconceptions of being a live or organ donor. That town hall starts on Wednesday at 2 p.m. We hope to see you there. Right, that's Wednesday. Tomorrow's Diabetes Alert Day. University Health will hold a resource fair focused on diabetes. Plus, you can learn more about a1C. Speak with medical experts as well. The Texas Diabetes Institute hosting the event. You're encouraged to register beforehand. We have a link to do that on ksat.com in the ksat community section. Bright object in the sky this evening. UFO like many people saw it. We got flooded with videos. We have an explanation of that coming up along with have a jacket ready to go in the morning. We'll talk about unseasonably cool conditions, how it changes later in the week and even affects Easter in just a bit. Okay, keep your eyes peeled for this. Some Texas highway signs are getting upgrades. San Antonio, home to the very first one. Some of the new advantages to those new versions. We're gonna talk about that next on the night beats. Here's something to watch out for while you're driving. Text out bringing some upgrades to signs across the state. And guess what? San Antonio got the first one. Text out says that ours is up at I-35 near Benton City Road. Uh, and here's the thing though, it looks like there's already more than one that's up. This video is over US 90 at Nogalitos. So those upgraded versions are fully digital and they have a lot more flexibility with messaging compared to the old amber only displays. You could read more about them right now on KSAT.com. Could they be signs of the time? <laughs> 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 All right, so our KSAT weather team is helping you get ready for the solar eclipse. I know you are counting down. Meteorologist Sarah Spivey and Mia Montgomery are gonna be hosting an eclipse glasses giveaway at Yanaguana Garden at Hemisphere. Yeah, you're going to need these shades. The mm -hmm. line starts at 4 p.m. Then the glasses will be handed out at 630. You can find more information on the giveaway on KSAT.com. Now, there was also something that happened over our skies uh, tonight that a lot of people have been asking about that specifically. Yeah, all right. We have an explanation for this. Yes, Adam. It's SpaceX doing SpaceX things, to put it the very simplest forms, right? Uh, it's a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket launched out of Cape Canaveral, Florida earlier this evening. It circled the Earth and then came back around over Texas because it's launched over the Atlantic, west to east. You have to use the slingshot of the Earth's rotation. What's that burst? Launching. What's that right that there? That little burst, that's called the jellyfish effect, and I think it's deploying its payload. It could be another stage in the rocket boosters in the engines. But so it's one of those two things. And the only reason you see that plume is because of the setting sun. Yeah. The low angle sun combined with the low Earth orbit of that rocket made it very visible to us. And when you say deploying its payload, you mean like it likely has satellites it does have that satellites. putting out into the yeah, space. Yeah, it's got a few dozen Starlink satellites that it's going to put into low Earth orbit. Already several thousand are out there, and we're going to see thousands and thousands of more in the years ahead, which is actually controversial. Yes, it brings Internet to all corners of the Earth, but it's going to really have a negative impact on stargazing and astronomy. It's going to really cause a bunch of quick flashing lines. Uh, it, long story, but um, it, it is a little controversial, those Starlink satellites. I do have to point that out. So that's what we saw. It was SpaceX doing SpaceX things, launching more uh, Starlink satellites in the low Earth orbit. But it was that low angle sun that made it key for us to see, just like the International Space Station. It's only visible to our naked eye around sunrise and sunset, give or take. All right, let's talk about the cool weather, cool conditions. Tomorrow morning, have a jacket ready to go, especially in the hill country, 39 degrees. Ingram, Kerrville, Mountain Home, Comfort, Sisterdale, even Bernie to Bulverde in the upper 30s. Locally, we'll be about 46 degrees for that low temperature. By noon, we're at 63, 
and then short sleeves by the afternoon, sunny and 74 low humidity. A very pleasant day. This is this is the ideal weather for working outdoors. If you work outside, dress in layers, but it's going to feel just fine. Not too hot, not too cool. Castroville 76 tomorrow, Bulverde and Canyon Lake 72 for the high. Notice our afternoon temperature trend gradually rising back into the 80s by Friday and especially this upcoming weekend. Easter Sunday up to 83 degrees and the humidity is going to return then as well. Speaking of humidity or lack thereof, dew point currently at 33 degrees. The wind has calmed as well. That's nice to see, but the air is dry and the air is going to stay dry for a few more days until we get that wind coming off the Gulf of Mexico, what we call the return flow, and that's going to kick in later this week. And notice by Saturday, the air is going to be at that muggy level. You'll feel that stickiness and mugginess back in the air, and it's going to stay through Easter Sunday and into the early part of next week. So not only will it feel a little muggy, but also I do think that's going to lead to some foggy dampness to start the day on Easter. Just that little damp fog, like what we had this past Sunday, right? It was almost kind of misty and then cloudy the rest of the day. I think it's going to be pretty much carbon copy. We had some, we got clipped by a few showers earlier today, just under two tenths of an inch officially at the airport, but most of the action was off to our north and east. And we have to point out a little bit of snow that fell in parts of the panhandle. Yeah, still that time here. This is a wide reaching system, actually. Big long wave trough in the upper level flow and snow stretching from New Mexico through Texas all the way into Minnesota, parts of the the upper peninsula of Michigan on into Canada. A little burst of energy Wednesday gives us isolated showers possible. We're talking a 20% chance. And then there's going to be energy out there, just not over us. Thereafter, it's going to be spinning over California and the Western US. And maybe within about seven to 10 days, bring us another shot at rain. But over the next seven days, we're not looking at much. And actually you look at the overall potential and it's almost like there's a bubble over Texas, Oklahoma, in Kansas, all the good precipitation is around us, unfortunately. So 20% chance Wednesday morning and notice the morning temperatures remaining unseasonably cool below average 50 Wednesday morning, Thursday 49. So keep the sweatshirts ready to go near the front door for the kids at the bus stop. Humidity returns Saturday, Easter Sunday. Again, morning mist and drizzle, then mostly cloudy and 83 degrees. And of course, we'll be fine tuning that forecast in the days ahead. Here's a look at live cam. No UFO like <laughs> plumes or jellyfish effects in our sky right now. Again, SpaceX doing SpaceX things earlier this evening. It was really cool. It was cool to see. Yeah, but but alarming for folks. And I get that. I understand yeah. it. Yeah, thank you. All right, so if you thought, you oh, there's 11 games left, the Spurs are probably going to phone it in. <laughs> ah, not so quick. Yeah, and the Spurs told us in recent days anyways, they have no plans of phoning it in. They want to play and build up for next season. Well, tonight the Spurs played the Suns without Victor Wimbanyama. So who stepped up? Jeremy Sohan had a monster game. And our San Antonio Sports All-Star game was awesome. Look at them playing tough. Coming up. Brandeis star Ryan Forcier dropped 30 points to help Team Gold beat Team Black 60 to 58 in one of four all-star basketball games in big board sports. Here's Spurs star rookie Victor Wimbanyama in street clothes tonight. He did not face the Suns because of a sprained left ankle. During his pregame presser tonight, Coach Pop said he's not sure if it's a lingering thing and that Wimby tweaked it sometime during Saturday's home loss to the Suns and he kept playing and that it bothered him afterward. Wimby went through morning shoot around the Testa's ankle. Not long after that, he was ruled out for tonight's contest. And Pop also said Wimby's chances of playing Wednesday are probably a little better than 50-50. All right, let's go to the action now. First quarter. Suns and Spurs, Zach Collins 
Bounce past the Devin Vassell for some jam. Spurs led 29-22 after one. Second quarter, Phoenix takes the lead 41-39 thanks to Kevin Durant and that jumper. San Antonio still playing from behind when Vassell feeds Jeremy Sohan for a high percentage shot. Spurs trailed at halftime 50-47 after leading by as many as 11 points. Third quarter, Spurs are still behind when, check it out, Vassell steals the ball away from KD and back he goes for a slam dunk. And then a little bit later, Blake Wesley doing the same thing, steals the pass, and there he goes for a flush. They led 75-74 going into the fourth. Now, after going up by nine, the Spurs almost gave this one away, but Sohan seals the deal with this three ball with 29 seconds to go. Spurs lead 104-102, and they win by that same score. Sohan led the way with 26 points and 18 rebounds you know it's, it's just good to have a win good to have a win and you know the season we have so against a team like that uh, you know we ended what three wins and one loss against them so I think that shows a lot and it just feels good to you know get good team win and you know have good energy around the, the, the locker room and the Spurs will next play at the Utah Jazz Wednesday night at 8 Women's college basketball number one, Texas, relied on its defense to top number eight, Alabama, yesterday, advancing to the Sweet 16. Horns freshman Madison Booker scored 21 points, and the Longhorns are moving on 65-54, holding Bama to nearly 20 points below their season average. We were fired up. Every huddle, we were intentional. We were looking at each other. Maddie was saying great things. You know, she was saying, who do you have? We were making sure we were matched up. So I think it just was, we knew that we had a chance to win the game. We just needed to lock down. Every possession mattered, and I think we did a great job of coming together. Baylor guard Jada Walker scored 26 of her career-high 28 points in the second half yesterday. It's all about survive and advance, and that's what number five Baylor did, topping number four Virginia Tech 75-72, advancing to the Sweet 16. Um, it was working uh, for me down the stretch. I was hitting shots, and I'm glad I was because I, I haven't been early on in the season, but now is the time where it's, it's crunch time. we got to hit shots in order for us to win, and I did, Sarah did, a lot of our teammates did, and we got stops down the stretch that helped us. So. Turning to high school, your San Antonio All-Star basketball players put on a heck of a show after the break. Stater from Bernie. Not only did she win the tip, she got the first basket. It's two to nothing goal. He's really hard. Bernie forward Avery Aaron scored the first points in San Antonio All Star basketball game history. We pretty much saw it all yesterday at Northside Sports Gym in the first ever San Antonio Sports All Star basketball game. We had buzzer beaters, slam dunks, and a lot of great action. Eight teams, four games, 120 of the top seniors in the area, and eight fantastic head coaches. Now, my all-star mentee, Bella Galan from Taft High School, helped out as part of her school project, and she did a great job getting us post. I'm coaching my last game, so it was a lot of fun. Well, congratulations. I hope it meant a lot to you. It did. It meant, it meant a world. It did. I love it. I, 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 I will look on this. I got them all to sign a ball for me, and I'm going to get it up on the mantle quickly. They come well coached, and it's fun. Our practices were fun. The game was fun. It's great because I only have to tell them one time on something, and they'll go out and do it. Or like, even any basketball terminology, their IQ is, is, is uh, high, so it's easy to coach them. What does this victory mean to you? Oh. I mean, it means a lot. This is the last game that I'll be able to play with my high school coach and then obviously Abby, my teammate of six years now. So it was a it was an amazing thing to be able to get a last one with them for our last game together. Ella, she did a fantastic job, but all the players yeah. excellent as well. Well, the players, the coaches, I mean, yeah. this was this was a game, big game for them. It really was. Like you said, that like at five o'clock, they actually played defense. They this did wasn't an NBA <laughs> All-Star yeah. game. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, Larry. Thank you. We'll be right back after this. All right, so keep this in mind if you're planning to climb Mount Everest. There's a poop problem there. Mm. Heard it right, yeah. Between the harsh weather and the thousands of people who take that trek every year, poop is polluting the area. So now mm. climbers have to carry bags that hold their waist, bring it back down with them. By the way, it can take two to three months to climb Mount Everest. Oh. I'll let you think about that. Yeah. You can also read more about how much it costs to make that trip. It's a lot of money. Just look for the story on our website, ksat.com. So instead of a to-go bag, it's a got-to-go bag. <laughs> <laughs>
And I bet maybe they can't do like a bio let or something because there's not as enough oxygen for all the you know biological processes and stuff. Anyway, whatever. You and it care. probably freezes. Yeah. That would be heavy duty. Oh boy. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>